All right, additional thoughts time for Erica Ba. Do not bad do ba do. <laughs> Thank you everybody for helping me get that down right. Uh, the album, of course, oh, it's right in front of me. So I guess it would be Baduism, not Baduism. That one, it's funny. I have a harder time with that than than ba do. Anyway, additional thoughts for the album. Uh, quite enjoyable. Quite enjoyable. A fun little gem, I suppose I would call it. I've got a couple notes, not a lot. Uh, I think this album is one of those things where it's it's very simple to enjoy, very easy to listen to, have on. I put it on quite a bit, honestly, uh, in different situations. So <clears throat> I was I was testing it because, like you guys saw in the reaction, there uh, at one point I mentioned how it was fun for me to listen to this album because I don't have anything really that exists in this area, this genre. Uh, obviously, I've listened to Voodoo by D'Angelo, and that's a fantastic album too. But really, in this space of music, I just don't have anything. And so, part of my week with this album, I was running little experiments. Like, okay, how is it when I'm, you know, gaming? Eh, not, not really. You know, it needs a little bit more oomph. I didn't, I didn't do any testing with it, like trying to listen to it while driving while I was a little sleepy because I felt that would be dangerous because this would probably just put me right out. But, you know, I put it on over the weekend once and my wife was like, oh, who's this? I was like, this is, this is the album from, from Friday. She's like, oh, wow, yeah, this is, this is nice. You know, just had it on, just in the background, kind of playing. I put it on at dinner. That was great. Honestly, that was really great. Just listening to it at dinner. And then the, my favorite little experiment, little test, was Monday morning, driving into work. Because usually, Monday morning, <clears throat> I'm not very excited, but I'm not very happy. You know, I, it's hard to, hard to figure out why. It's, it's consistently Monday morning that I'm the most grumpy <laughs> going into work. And so I was like, let's put this on and see what this does. And surprisingly to me, it really did help. Just chill me out. Not like, not like I needed to calm down or anything like that, but it, it's fine. It's fine. Stop overreacting. Just relax a little bit. Take a breath. It's, it's okay. It's just another day. It's not a big deal. You know, that, that kind of thing. There's nothing to be cranky about. Just listen to the music. Enjoy it. And really, it worked great. I even listened to it again, I think, on Tuesday morning on my way in. So... Kind of neat little experiment there in terms of how it affects my mood going into work. Because usually I just don't, I just don't want to fucking go. I think we can all uh, connect on that idea. Um, and I think the biggest reason I put one of my notes, I just have silky playfulness. Something I recognize with this album as I was listening to it is, especially for me, I think I put a little too much um, notice or emphasis on these artists who can really push the edge of what they're doing because it's incredible right when you hear somebody who can just sing like sing 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 high notes and lots of power it's incredible somebody who's rapping their ass off with these complex rhyming schemes and tearing through it with ease it's incredible you know guitar solos and drum fills it's incredible when you get to hear these artists who can really crank it out and not that Erica doesn't have bleeding edge talent, but in the album, the experience with it, for me, it was, it's just much more subtle. It, and I, I constantly got this image that I mentioned in the reaction. You know, she's just in this spotlight, dimly lit, you know, piano bar type thing, smoke in the air, just, just chill, but not... Not, uh, I don't want to say like asleep, but still playful. Calm, but still playful. Just these little wiggles in her voice every now and then. And like, uh, oh man, what was it? Certainly, I think it's certainly where she carries that note at the end. Little elements like that. Little, little elements of flair in the lyrics here and there to keep you listening. And just a great sound in her voice, a great style. And I think that's, it kind of wraps it all up. You know, I remember thinking at one point, I was listening to just the music and thinking the music is, is pretty, I'll just say simple, straightforward. Not that it needs to be anything more than that. And the question popped into my mind when I was thinking about it. 
Well, what else would it be? You know, I mean, this is the music that it's supposed to be. This is, this is what you would do for this kind of sound. It's like, yeah. So we wrote back and forth between this idea of kind of noticing how straightforward the music was, but also going, well, but that's what it's supposed to be. But then when you put her on top of it, the vocals and the playfulness, it's just this nice little splash along with the music. And I guess really that's it. I mean, it's kind of a, a difficult album for me to, I don't know, go into great detail with because of what it is. But I think what it is is what makes it so fun to listen to. It's so easy to listen to. Um, there were some mentions in the comments about Sade. I think that's how you pronounce that artist's name. Sade. Got to get into some Sade. I would like to at some point, but that's probably a little further down the road. Uh, you know, I'd like to do more D'Angelo. Um, I would like to explore artists in this space more because I think it's just a cool sound. And it's something that's very new for me, honestly. I don't have, like I said before, I don't have a lot of music in this realm. And so it would be neat to explore in this realm. But sometimes that can be a double-edged sword. Sometimes this great, chill, relaxing kind of background music that you have sometimes doesn't really work that well for a reaction format. So, you know, there you go. Uh, and I guess that's it. So with in terms of tracks, I'll talk about tracks. So yeah, Apple Tree remains my favorite. And I'm, I'm kind of a little cranky that On and On has all the streams when... <laughs> I, I love Apple Tree. I think it's fantastic. Other Side of the Game is another, another great song. I just like this idea of it being from her perspective. The music video I thought was excellent, how it's, it's the other side. And then it flips over to, oh man, what was the track? I can't remember which track it was on the music video, but it flips over. Basically when she stops worrying and he's got the money there, and it flips over to this other song. And so now her concerns are gone. But then when he leaves, it flips back to the original song of Other Side of the Game, just kind of signifying her emotional state as, as the video progresses. That was really cool. Next Lifetime, there's a cool comment about how that song addresses something that you know is, is difficult, but it, it does let you process feelings for that situation in a positive way, you know, being in a relationship and, and coming across somebody else who you're like, ooh, you're kind of tasty but I'm in a relationship and I'm a little torn. So I'll just utilize this idea of, you know, see in the next lifetime. Great track. Even the Afro freestyle skit is fun. I, I like her a little bit, but then what's cool is the musicians are kicking in a little bit, with just a little bit of subtle freestyle in how they're performing. Certainly it was, is a great track too. And I like, I like listening to it with the concept of, you know, who the hell gave you permission to do this to my emotions and to my mind? And, and it's, it's a cool song. Very cool song. With the back half, I don't want to say it loses steam because it's not like it's you know a high energy album. Anyway, Four Leaf Clover, I feel like it's placed perfectly. It, it, that one is a little bit more up-tempo, a little bit more energy. So it kind of like, you know, gives you a little oomph as you, as you get through the final tracks. Um, no Love and Drama are cool. Sometimes I like a lot and then certainly flipped. It's funny because when I get to certainly flipped with it having the slightly different production, I forget what the first one sounds like, <laughs> like the original version. So then I have to go back and go, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, there you go. That's my, that's my thing. You know, and with Rimshot too, in and out I do feel like I never did try this. I meant to, and I forgot. I was, I was going to put it on in a loop. So have the album loop around. I think that would have been fun to try out, just to see how it loops around, almost like a, almost like donuts, kind of. If you've done that, leave a comment, let me know how, how that actually works out. But I do feel like it being bookended with Rimshot functions that way. It's almost like a loop of just going through these emotions, which in itself almost paints a whole other story. Anyway, there you go. Okay, well... There's my additional thoughts. Nothing tremendous, but fun album. I really, nothing tremendous in terms of what I've just said. <laughs> the album itself is fantastic. I really did like it a lot. Tomorrow, I don't know what I'm going to do. Everyone's mentioning School by Q now because he's got an album dropping at the beginning of the March. And so that's come up. Uh, I still want to do the albums I mentioned last week. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have no idea. Uh, I'm going to put it off until the last minute. <laughs> 
<laughs> and decide tomorrow morning. <laughs> All right, y'all. Take care. We'll see.